My name is Jason, and this is Just Watches. All right, today we have a fourth generation Seiko monster to review. Now, the monster is one of the classic Seiko watches. They all have these cool nicknames like the Samurai, the Turtle, the Sumo, etc. But I had never actually had a chance to handle a monster until I got this one. And I was initially concerned it would be a little bit too big for my taste, but along with a lot of the other Seiko watches, it wears slightly smaller than the specifications and the dimensions would lead you to believe. Now, as always, we're gonna do specifications, pros and cons, and then if I think this watch is worth the money. But I do wanna share an interesting tidbit. I was reviewing the analytics for my channel, and I noticed that less than 5% of my views come from subscribers. So if you're watching this channel and you're enjoying the content, I would love if you would subscribe. It would really help me out. Thank you. Now, starting with the case, the diameter is 42.5 millimeters. It's 48.5 millimeters lug to lug, but keep in mind the end links are proud of the case, so it does add to that lug to lug length. It's more like 52 millimeters if you include those end links. It's 13 millimeters thick, and then it does have a 20 millimeter lug width, but you'll notice that the first link of the bracelet is larger than the end link. It is larger to kind of follow the line made by the case down the edge of the bracelet. Now, it's mostly all brushed. There are a few places that are high polish. These small divots that correspond with the divots in the bezel are high polish. And then the crown is all high polish. And then there's some high polish areas here, which kind of continue the theme of the bracelet going down the watch. However, there's also this shrouding, which is kind of a cool thing the monster does, where the bezel is shrouded by the case across most of the lower position, and then it's also shrouded at the top at the between about the 1030 and 130 position. Now, I was initially concerned this would make the bezel hard to turn, but it's actually quite easy to grip, and the action is very smooth and clicky, and it's no problem. You can see I can turn it with just these two fingers to access the bezel between these two areas that are unshrouded. The bracelet is this sort of uh, T-link style, mostly brushed. You do have some high polish accents there. The end links are solid. Sizing is accomplished with the Seiko pin and collar system, which is a little tricky. I do have a video on how to tackle that. I'll put a link in the description. So starting 22, tapering down to 20, back up to 22 millimeters. This is the pretty standard Seiko pressed metal clasp. You have a double push deployment, four micro positions, and then the safety clasp with Seiko stamped in. I would prefer to see a milled clasp probably at this price point, but these Seiko clasps, even though they are just pressed metal, they're pretty solid. And this one does have a diver's extension, not something I would normally use, um, but if you do want the diver's extension, it is included on this bracelet. And then last thing on the bracelet, it does have drilled lugs, so it is gonna be easy to change the strap on this. Now flipping the watch over, we do have that classic Seiko wave that's found on many of their divers. And we have a screw in case back that's gonna help provide 200 meters of water resistance. And this is an ISO certified dive watch. As you can see, it is stamped divers 200 meter on the dial there. Now this is powered by the Seiko NH36. That's a 21,600 vibration per hour, 41 hour power reserve uh, movement with hacking, hand winding and a stated accuracy of minus 20 to plus 40. Um, but you'll see on the time graph for later that this one's doing much better than those stated tolerances. And then of course we have the day and the date. So we have a screw down crown at the four o'clock position, unsigned all high polish. However, the knurling on the crown is done very well. It's very easy to operate, to screw in and screw out. And then you do have quick set, quick set for the day and the date. For the crystal, we have a Hardlex, that's Seiko's proprietary crystal material. And you can see there's a facet on the end there, and the crystal does sit below the bezel, so it will be partially protected by the bezel on this watch. And then you probably noticed it, there is a giant Cyclops, I think it's called a candy bar Cyclops, that covers both the day and the date. Now, I know this is gonna be dividing for a lot of people. My rule with Cyclops is, is as follows. If it magnifies, a proper amount, then it should exist on the dial. It's okay to have. If it doesn't magnify very well, why are we putting it on there in the first place? And the magnification on this monster kind of falls between the two. It's clearly magnifying the day and the date to make it a little bit easier to read, but not that much. Not that much that I think it should be on the watch. Now, there's a simple solution. You can kill two birds with one stone. If you really want a sapphire crystal, I believe they have those available for this watch on like crystal times. You could just swap it out. 
you'd upgrade to Sapphire and get rid of the Cyclops at the same time. So you could probably go that route. I'm going to leave it. I think it's fine for now. It's pretty straight. I've also seen where they're applied and they're a little bit crooked. Seiko has a lot of alignment issues and it's not limited to just the chapter ring and the bezel. Um, they do also have problems aligning the Cyclops. But on this one, it's pretty straight. So I'm going to leave it for now. So the bezel is all one piece. It's really cool. There's no insert. And I don't know how they finished it. I think it's anodized black. And then the 15, 30, 45 in each of the dashes are etched into it and filled with a white material. The action is very satisfying. It's very easy to turn. A little bit loose, I think, for some people might say loose. But there's a nice click. And then on this one in particular, everything actually does line up. Now, I got this used. I actually recommend getting Seiko watches used, especially divers, because you can ask the seller for photography photographs of the alignment and this one is quite good i wouldn't call it perfect but for seiko standards of a bezel alignment i would call it pretty perfect you know when you get a new one you're a little bit at the mercy of the luck of the draw if you get one that aligns or not so if you want to save yourself a little bit of money and get one that aligns right maybe consider buying a used one and asking for the seller to give you a nice dead-on picture so you can check out the alignment before you agree to purchase so it's a little bit hard to tell in stock photos of this watch, but the dial is very dynamic. It's this very dark blue, but then when it plays with the light, it changes to all different kinds of shades of blue, and there's this sunburst effect. And I really like the effect they pulled off on the dial. There is Seiko at the 12 o'clock position, and then you have the Prospect X Automatic and Divers 200 meter at the 6 o'clock position. But they used, uh, they're not applied, and it's kind of like a gray uh application they did there and it really helps those details kind of fade away into the rest of the details of the watch. The indices are applied and long ago we've lost, I think originally this watch was called nicknamed a monster because you had the indices look like teeth. You still kind of have it at the 12 o'clock position but all the rest are just flat squares now. But I like what they did here. The you have the, it's very easy to align because you have the big one at 12 o'clock and then the 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock position are a bit bigger. And then, of course, you have the day and date at the 3 o'clock position. And also the loom applied here is kind of faux patinaed, I think. And I really like how it plays with the blue of the dial and the black of the bezel. So overall, I really like what they did with the indices. And then you can see they're cut into the chapter ring, which adds a lot of dimensionality to the dial. And then the chapter ring is basically this flat black that just kind of makes it fade into the bezel. I think they did a really good job on the overall design of the colors on this watch. Now the hands on this watch, while similar to the older style monster hands, have been refined some. You still have a giant arrow for the hour hand, but then that minute hand is longer and it's sharper. It comes to a sharper point and it terminates right at the edge of the chapter ring, which I really like because you can see it aligns with the dashes on the chapter ring for the minute, which just makes it a little bit easier to tell what time it is. The hands are flat, they're not gabled, which I do prefer, but they have that nice brushing finish and you can see they play with the light very nicely. Then you also have a very long second hand. It actually extends over the chapter ring, and you have an arrow about three quarters of the way down that is nicely loomed. Speaking of loom, something Seiko always gets right, and this is no exception, they did go with the blue loom here. It takes a little bit more light to charge, and while it's not as bright as the green, once it is charged, it's plenty bright to see and lasts a long time. Also, the choice of blue here rather than green, I think, was the correct choice for the overall color scheme of this watch. I think green would have felt really out of place here. So popping it on the time grapher, you can see the rate 18 seconds a day. So it's running a little fast. This is a pretty new watch, so I'd expect it to slow down a little bit over time. Very healthy amplitude, a little bit of a high beat error there at 0.4 milliseconds. Overall, kind of what you'd expect out of Seiko NH36, and I always prefer my watches to run fast rather than slow. And here it is on my six and three quarters inch wrist. Now, mind you, that 48.5 millimeter lug to lug kind of does go all the way from one end of my arm to the other. However, it's 42.5 millimeters in case diameter, and it doesn't really look that big on my six and three quarters inch wrist. I think that's partially helped by the black color of the bezel, but whatever it is, I think I could actually find myself wearing this one, even though it's quite a bit bigger than my normal preference of 39 millimeters. So pros and cons. Well, this is a really refined and well-designed version of the Seiko Monster. I love what they did with the handset, and there's something about the black bezel, the blue dial, and the faux patina loom they used on the hands and indices that all comes together for a very aesthetically pleasing watch. 
And then, of course, we have Seiko Luma Bright Loom, which is always very well applied, bright, and responsive. The bezel action is good. I was a little bit worried that it'd be difficult to operate because the bezel is semi-shrouded, but it is easy to operate and has a satisfying action. And then finally, as is true with many Seiko divers, it just wears smaller than the dimensions would leave you to believe. This is a 42.5 millimeter watch, which generally I would consider too big for my six and three quarters inch wrist, but somehow due to the Seiko case design magic, it just looks right on my wrist. What about cons? So I think the con on this watch is the price. At the time of this recording, it's a bit north of $300. However, the prices on the King Samurai and King Turtle are slowly trending lower, and I've seen them dip below $400 from certain sellers. So for just a bit more than this Seiko Monster, you can get either the King Samurai or King Turtle, which feature a sapphire crystal and a ceramic bezel, which are two really nice upgrades that are widely requested on watches, especially that sapphire crystal at that price point. So is the watch worth the money? Well, I think if the design speaks to you and you wait for a sale, or better yet, you find a nice deal on a used one and you ask for pictures of the bezel alignment, I think you can justify this purchase. But if you really like Seiko and Sapphire Crystal and Ceramic Bezel are important to you, keep an eye on the King Samurai and King Turtle. I think the prices may trend down even a bit more, and these two watches might be close to the same price. That being said, I didn't think I would like this watch as much as I do, and I think it might actually stick around in the collection for a while. The combination of the black bezel and blue dial is really sharp, and I think they have refined the monster into quite a piece in this fourth generation. So there you guys have it, the fourth generation monster. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. As always, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the content of this individual video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Until next time, this is Jason, and you've been watching Just Watches.